what's going on guys another day the bearded panda fab today we got all kinds of stuff going on and it's a hot one way over 101 but it is what it is south texas what can you do so today we're going to be working on this dude's ride let's go check it out all right so what we're working on is a 370z we're going to be putting on some carbon fiber front fenders hood the Nismo front bumper, he did add on a really nice splitter. Did it really good, I'm gonna show you all that. I'm really proud of the way he got that done. We're gonna put on some side skirt extensions that match that front splitter. But let's just go ahead and take a walk around. He's got it as a battleship gray or a cement gray kind of color. It's got the like a real nice sparkle to it. I don't know if the camera's catching it. Spoiler or duckbill, and then the rear chassis mounted big wing spoiler. Actually looks pretty good on this 370Z. Some like it, some don't. I actually think it looks pretty good. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the parts that we're getting on there. Okay, so here are the goodies in a pile. So there's the Nismo front bumper with the splitter. The Fly One Motorsports RS1 Vinted Carbon Fiber. Fender, we're gonna go over all these parts in detail in just a second. And then the splitters with the fin towards the end to match the bumper. So on this front splitter, he did carbon fiber adjustment rods on the front, kind of hold, stabilize, I guess the stabilizers. Uh, has that in the front, bolted to the top here. So that way it has good stabilization. And then here on the back side, let's walk around. Got some really nice washers, bolts to actually go through, space them out nicely. So that way this sucker is not letting go. So really excited about that. See how nice and aggressive it's gonna look when it's on. Here are the RS1 carbon fiber fenders by Fly One Motorsports. They do have the functional vents, no screen or mesh on those, but I guess it's an always an optional thing. And I understand that. We make uh, vented car uh, fender flares too. And uh, we like to leave that option open because there's so many different things you could get in there. Some people like mesh, some people don't, etc. stuff like that. Um, I did notice that on their carbon fibering, they do put like a transparent black paint on all the edges. So it kind of like fades from dark to light. Now this is an option some people like, some people don't. Um, he does have a carbon fiber hood, so the only downfall on that is it's gonna go faded along all these lines instead of looking nice and smooth, transition over. You're gonna see this dark line right here. Most people don't see a problem with that. For me as a carbon fiberer, I prefer to have it nice and clean all the way through. Now let's look at the back side. All right, so here's the back side. On the top half, you got your mounting points. Now on their uh, instructional video, they say to, instead of cutting holes, that you kind of make a groove here, or a solid cut, so you can make your fenders adjustable. Um, I kind of would rather just put a hole in a slightly bigger so you have some movement, but it's not gonna be all the way through. That's me, again, just going off my preferences. Now on the back, looks like it's painted black. Um, the way this finish looks to me, because we also do um, different methods of carbon fibering. It looks like this initially was fiberglass for the first several layers. And then they go and add the carbon fiber as the, the face. Not 100% sure, but I'll show you ours and what we do so you can kind of see the difference. So to me, this is a fiberglass backing to build a structure. And then they skin the front with the carbon fibering. So um, let me show you for example of, so you can see the difference in the actual textures. Okay, so here's the bottom lip for our Vader model for the Scion TC 2.5. Now, this is still in the building process. On the surface, we do use a two by two carbon fiber sheet. And it still has all the like PVA and everything on it. So it's not clean, rough edges and all that stuff. Um, you want to see the final product 
follow uh, our, inst or, I'm sorry, Instagram, and follow our YouTube, hit subscribe, and that way you can finish seeing the process of this being built. Now here's the back side. We don't paint the back side, but even if you took some clear paint or wet it or um, added some epoxy to it, it'll actually look super duper 3D real nice. Now this is a one by one twill. It's a little tighter, uh, a little stronger, so that way it creates good stability. Plus since it's not being seen, there's really no sense in doing the two by two all the way through. So if you look up close, you can actually see how it's uh, a nice, I guess, quilted pattern or overlay pattern. And then on this side up close, you can see that two by two twill. Now let's go look at some inner fiberglass parts. Okay, so here's one of our Model 101s painted. Um, this was an old sponsorship one that got chipped, so we have it back. But if you go and you look up close, we paint ours black as well. But you see how it's got that stringy texture in it? That's fiberglass. This whole thing is fiberglass. So if I go and I compare that to these um, Fly One carbon fiber fender flares, or fenders, vented fenders, you can kind of see the similarities. So, like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I don't uh, really um, know the history on the, this company. Just showing you what I see and my expertise in it. And uh, if you're okay with fiberglass fender flare skinned with carbon fiber, which we do all the time, I'm not knocking it, um, that's what you're getting. So, but let's go ahead and go look at the hood. Boom, the hood. This is a VIS racing sports hood. Very, very nice. The finish on it is immaculate. They do their carbon fibering all the way to the edge. No uh, tinting or anything like that. The clear coat, you can definitely tell there's a clear coat over this. Some companies will leave a gel coat only and just polish the gel coat. This one is definitely clear coated. If anything, it's a really nice epoxy polished up. Um, let's go ahead and lift it to look at the back side. So they put wood ends on there for that extra support. And then inner side, I can tell that this is probably fiberglass here, which is perfectly fine. There's no need to do a full skeleton in carbon fiber. It could be, it couldn't be, I can't tell. To me, it's smooth enough to be, um, fiberglass and here that looks like it could be one by one carbon fiber and if not it's um what's it called cloth fiberglass which is still really nice as well they put the mesh inside with the little tabs that bend over so if you ever needed to change them out it looks like some of it's screwed on like at least the vent section let me zoom out here this vent section you see how there's some screws in there um so it looks like that section can be removed if need be and you have actual metal screwing brackets so you can put your OEM parts back on so I say let's go ahead and get that started I, I really don't even honestly know where to start um, such cool parts there we go kind of zoomed out lots of cool parts parts uh, part of me wants to start on the side skirts part of me wants to start by putting on this hood fenders golly let's just get at it the owner of this car decided to opt out on the side markers. He didn't want to cut the fenders for the blinker or side marker. So we just zip tied those in place. Pretty solid where they're at. Here are the splitters. If you come on the side here, they're almost the same length. If anything, just two millimeters off. Um, so I figure if I do about a millimeter off the front and a millimeter off the back, you really can't tell that it's slightly off. Yeah, but it's better to be like that than like overly extended because these are aluminum. So cutting that, sanding down all the edges and all that stuff is far more work than if they were like an uh, ABS plastic or something. But I like the fact that they're aluminum, very quality. 
definitely like these. They also look really good with the fin here on the side. So let me see what kind of screws this sucker came with and go from there. Send a few pictures to the owner, see if how he wants it set up so we can get these bad boys installed. Next, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and test fit the fender. All right, so it looks like it came with some self tappers. Now they're already all pre-drilled, so I'll probably stick with these. These are actually really nice. Um, just gotta double check to see placement and see where he's happy with, and then uh, we'll get those put in. The challenge today is that these came with some pre-drilled holes. Not 100% how they got there. That's okay though. But if you kind of look here, that's where the holes up, oh, let's move up, where the hole sits, where the drill hole is. And even if I push it, it's still pretty off. That's okay. So what we're going to do is grind down some of this, fill it in with some uh, fiberglass and then relayer a, uh, a layer of fiberglass on the bottom for that extra reinforcement. Still need to drill this hole up here. Now what's crazy to me is, is how the 370Z for the headlights, instead of having a, a intense mounting bracket onto like the um, radiator support or the framing or anything like that or the engine bay. It really just depends off the fender, which is crazy. But, you know, we'll get that figured out. I do have the carbon fiber hood on. Um, I'll show you that here just in a bit. I did have to go and get some washers and lock washers so that way it really holds this hood where it needs to be and it keeps it there. Did get another um, hood latch. Gonna get all the hardware in here. The VIS uh, racing badge right there. And then we're gonna have to do work on this front bumper. Let me go show you what's going on. Now this Nismo bumper is an aftermarket. It's a fiberglass one. Um, it has some pretty intense holes in here. Um, there isn't really much of a lip on this bad boy. And that kind of stinks. Um, that's why it's so sensitive. So what I'm also gonna do is sand this down here, get it filled in on the bottom side, um, build a whole new lip. But first I need what I'm applying here to dry. So that way um, I can get the carbon or the fiberglass on the inside. So I need this to be a little thicker. That way I got some more bite. Um, so I'm gonna build that up with fiberglass this shape here, I'm going to go a little more intense like the flare here or the fender. There's a nice lip here. And then I know a bracket goes here. Um, the customer brought that to me today, so I'm going to see how that's going to fit. But this is like a really good mounting point for both the bumper and the fender. So normally a, a hole goes here with a nice bolt washer setup. But with this um, front bumper, I'm not really getting that option to put a nice excuse me, heavy duty bolt. Um, also, I noticed that they just did small little pre-drills here and uh, clips usually hold this on. I'm gonna see what the customer is gonna wanna do, whether they wanna stick with these little holes or go to clip mode. So let's get these things worked on. Anytime you do fiberglass repair, you always wanna clean up the area so that way the uh, fiberglass gets a really good hold. So like here, you see, you'll see some buildup in there. We gotta get that all cleaned out you scuff up the surface with like an 80 grit, should be good. 60 is fine as well, so you get some nice deep scratches. Wherever there's a crack like there is right here, you actually want to make a groove into that crack. So I got my Dremel here with a little bit. In a minute, I'm gonna actually grind a little channel out because if you just throw, let's say Bondo glass or you know, uh, fiberglass, with little hairs in it or resin, it, it's not gonna seep in there and get a good hold. So that crack is gonna reappear. Also, once I'm done, um, and this is already all dried up, I always go, well, first and foremost, I always go and put a nice thicker layer because there's a lot of like unevenness in this bumper. You got a bunch of highs and lows. So I'm actually gonna flush it out. So I'm gonna put some nice Bondo glass in here to make it all nice and flush. And then it'll also give me that extra support in these holes. Also, when that dries up, for the most part, I'm gonna go onto the bottom side, make another little channel 
where the crack is at and then further down because this crack goes to about here but because that's painted and I don't have the paint and uh, um, paint code to get that cleaned up the crack you can barely see on the outside so on the inside I'm gonna groove it away make the little channel throw a little bit more in there and then sand all this up and then lay layers of fiberglass and I'm gonna show you that process and same thing on this side so we have it all set up too and so once like I already said I don't have the color um, paint and uh, I'm not sure if he wants to touch it up just yet he can always do it later and bring it back and we'll repaint the whole front bumper but for now since this area isn't really seen this is gonna go a black so it'll not look like there's 50,000 holes in here so also I have the other fender over there to do the same thing as well on that hole that was made off center so uh, it's hot enough for it to cure really fast so hopefully this process won't take too too long There it is. I already placed the Bondo glass and sanded it down really quick with the DA. Um, now, just a good note to self for those who want to do fiberglass work or touch ups on their bumpers and cars and stuff. Bondo glass is very good at filling in little small cracks, holes. It's more durable than your standard body filler. Um, so since this is fiberglass and I want to be able to put new holes and reinforcement, the Bondo glass is really good for that. It's hardened, but I've seen other YouTubers and people trying to show you how to do body kits and work and this and that. Now they make a big mistake by using the Bondo glass to build structure. It's not meant for structure. It's meant just to fill in cracks, little bits of damages here and there. And the reason being is, let's say, since I'm wanting to build a whole new um, section here, so that way I have a good mounting point, you want to build that with actual matte uh, chopped fiberglass. And I'll show you some in a minute, not the cloth. Cloth is way too thin for this kind of structure. You want the matte um, chopped fiberglass. Now, um, the reason being is I've seen some people go and try to build tabs and all this other stuff and structures with the Bondo glass. The problem with that is it's only got small fine hairs and those little f small fine hairs don't have enough strength to, and stability to create a structure. So I've seen some people build this much out with Bondo glass and expect it to hold, but it won't. Through time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna stress crack right back right here, right at the seam, because it doesn't have that kind of strength. Matte, chopped matte glass has cross sections and the hairs are thrown and they're all at decent lengths. And what that does is it creates that really good stability, that strength. I mean, that's what this whole bumper is built off of. So if you want this kind of strength and rigidity, you need to have the chopped matte glass over this Bondo glass. So now I'm gonna go ahead and build the bottom section so that way I can start laying in glass and then reshape all of this tab. Next step, cardboard process. Now I put um, duct tape on this side because um, fiberglass and resin don't really care to hold on to duct tape. If you want to guarantee an easier removal, you can go ahead and throw a little bit of wax or um, like a par partial wax, which is like a mold release wax. You can put that on here so that way it pulls off easier, but it's not really needed. Um, I like to use duct tape. You can also use some kind of a clear packaging tape. That works as well. So what I'm going to do is, is since I'm actually building the fiberglass 
from the inside out. That way I can lay some on the side and let it start folding out this way. So what I want to do is hot glue it to this lip and then when everything's settled and, and set in place, I'll turn the bump around and start laying the glass. I use the Gorilla Glue Sticks so much tougher than your standard glue stick. Now since I have it on high mode, you definitely want to hold the cardboard for a little bit because if not, it's going to come up. You see, like that, it's hot. Woo! Ow! Ow! So I'm just gonna hold it here for a little bit. Let it kinda cool down and set in place. Okay, so we have our paintbrush and our resin. Make sure, always make sure you mix that resin well. Bring this over here so I can put my stick on. Now, it's good to saturate it well enough, but I don't want to oversaturate it to where I have a bunch of resin going everywhere. This is your chopped matte glass. You see how the hairs are real nicely intertwined with each other? So that way, it gets a nice good bond. So I want to put a little bit here. I'm going to start laying it down. And I want to go on to the body a little bit so that way it holds well enough. Now a lot of people go and start pouring this resin on. I don't like to do that. I feel like that's sloppy. Plus, when you put more resin than need be, you're then making the fiberglass a little weaker. I'm going to come out to here. And so that way I can cut and shape it however I'd really like. Alright. Get some more. Now when it's hot outside, you get your resin, and it's usually 1.25% of your volume, but when it's really hot outside, you want to reduce it just by a little bit, maybe like 1 point, you know, 1.5%, um, 1.10 even, because if not, this resin will gel up really fast. See how I'm saturating it just enough to get rid of all the air bubbles to change the color from the fiberglass to this white to this uh, kind of yellowy brown. That lets me know that you've put enough resin into your fiberglass. And this is why it's not needed to pour it on. Also, some people use the roller. I do the pat method. Patting it on is just to suffice. What you're trying to do is just get rid of all the air bubbles. By patting it, you get rid of a lot of those air bubbles. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. It's time to remove the cardboard. All right, so when I taped it, I put another, first I laid some more tape here to assure that none of the uh, resin was gonna hit the paint. Also, I put a layer of tape between the cardboard and the actual surface here. So that way, if for whatever reason, any of the resin got through the, um, the cardboard or the space between the cardboard and the bumper it wouldn't go running down so it's definitely got to do that so let's peel this off so you see so I know it's a mess right now it's not pretty or anything but that's okay 
So what I needed was this hard surface, but do you see the difference by just going, like I could lift up this entire bumper just off these two layers of, of uh, fiberglass. Before going and adding another layer of fiberglass, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more Bondo glass in here just to make up for that spacing. And then once that's done, I will lay one more layer of fiberglass, maybe two, just so I get that same thickness. And then so when I go and sand it all down, it'll be one really nice smooth transition. So let's go ahead and get that done. But I'm really impressed with the results. Ta-da! The completed side. So I've already gotten it all taped up and painted up. Of course, this is the body line. And I wanted to get along with the body line, but I'm trying to get as much hidden as possible. But I have it nice and like a satin black. So once it's pressed up against the fender, you really won't see it. So that's it up close. Body work all nice and clean. Let's see if we can get a zoom in. There you go. And then I even took the time to paint the inside, even though the inside gets all dirty. But it's also a set in black in there. So that's it from both sides. There, another zoomed in version. Oh, let's see. Right there. So that's how clean that work comes out. I even round off the edges and everything. Try to make it look as stock as possible. So that way it's just impressive work. Um, so yeah, we went from that over there. Ugh. So that right there, pretty good difference. Here's this side, said and done. Finished all the uh, body work. Got it into paint. Whatever little paint kind of seeps off the edge there, I get a 2000 grit sandpaper and just feather the edging. So it's a nicer straighter line and then I could always go and hand buff that little corner. But that's it, this front bumper is ready to go. Okay, quick note. The uh, manufacturer video that they show on YouTube shows to mark your hole area and cut out the entire section, just a nice little square. So that way you have some wiggle room to, for adjustment purposes. I'm a little different on that. I like it to stay a little cleaner. What I do is I mark where the hole is, drill the hole, and then I elongate to like an oval and that gives me my room for adjustment. I like to keep a closed tab. You just never know, be on the safe side. Just note to self. folks all said and done this bad boy is complete 
Now, this build was definitely a challenge. It's not easy getting three aftermarket components to fit all together. You know, everybody has their quality and some challenges <laughs> on their products. You know, um, VIS Racing Hood, very good. This bumper, a little bit of a challenge. You know, we had to make those tabs to make it line up with the fenders. Um, it could have had some more improvements around the headlights, just a, a smidge, but not too much. The fenders, honestly, I thought it was gonna be an easier install, but these fenders needed a little bit of snug and pulls and pushes. And so if you have any questions, comments, concerns on how to get these fenders to fit, line up really well, comment down below, reach out to me, make some suggestions on something I could have done differently, by all means, positive, negative criticism, I'll take it. You know, also, it gives other people the opportunity to see what could have been done differently. Um, I'm really good with reaching out to any of my customers on the build and the progress as it goes. I let them know of any challenges, something that could have improved, parts that I might need, things I might have to build and make, like tabs to, to get everything to fit together or extend them, extend them out. So I always like to make sure it's within the budget of their build or if they want to go ahead and save up for it and do something in the future, by all means. They can always reach out to me again and get it to be done. So with that said, if you have a car that you want to build and put together very well with love and care, paint, no paint, primer, etc. Hit us up. Let me know. If you're in the Houston, Texas area, by all means, we'll make it happen. Even if you want to ship your car out to me, definitely make it happen. Don't forget, Bearded Panda Fab. I should have like all these flashy signs and stuff like, hey, here, right now. So anyhow, I also want to thank you for taking the time to watch the build. If you want to see any future builds or the progress of the TC and every other project that we might have coming along, subscribe. Don't be shy. Subscribe. And hit the thumbs up and the little bell. You know, those kind of things make a difference for us too. Keeps this channel going. Let's me know that you like to see what you're seeing. Um, yeah, it's getting hot. I'm ready to go inside. Maybe have an adult beverage. <laughs> It is the weekend, time for me to relax. You guys take me.